All right, for Digital Muscle Media, this is being brought to you by GMU Sport. I'm here with the legendary bodybuilder, Flex Wheeler, four-time Arnold Classic champion, three-time first Olympia runner-up, and five-time pro Ironman champion on the verge of being inducted into the Arnold Schwarzenegger Lifetime Achievement Award. And I know that sounds like a mouthful, Flex, considering where you came from. I just did an article on you. Amazing article about your uh, about a little bit of history on you and uh, here we are and i'm going to take you back down memory lane because uh, a lot of you guys don't know flex and i are virtually the same age he's about two or three weeks older than i am but i met flex back before he actually became mr california yeah yeah um you were living in a hotel like in a, you had a hotel in a, what is that? marina del rey, marina del rey. Yeah, yeah marina del rey and that yeah. was actually the an apartment Corvette. it was actually an apartment <laughs> but 1980 oh, right, right, 1989 right. i believe is when you won the mr california yeah and i saw you a little bit before that and i, I saw the potential and i also saw the rivalry that would shortly ensue because <laughs> i had a little bit of a head start on you in the bodybuilding yep. area but you played catch up really fast you're five foot ten at the time i don't know you're about five nine now yeah five nine when i'm in front, <laughs> when I, i'm depressed when you're depressed yeah, five nine yeah. but you came on you won the california you went on to win the usa championships and i believe the year you won the usa championships if you didn't win i remember you telling me that was it you yeah. were done 100 percent because um I didn't have a job, and uh, Chris and Rico would pay for my food every time we went to go eat. And I was just like, you know, I got to make a living. You know, I can't keep living off of people. So thank God it worked out for me in 92. Yeah, you were bouncing at the, the famous Roxbury, a night at the Roxbury Club with yeah. Rico and Chris as your training partners. Yeah. But along the way, I kept on uh, doing my thing as a bodybuilder. I know you were watching yeah. and uh, waiting for that opportunity to come. And man, when that opportunity came in 1992 and you got your pro card, you kicked the doors down in 93. You were virtually a transformed bodybuilder the likes the world had never seen. I've, I've always said this, at 216 pounds, 93, your first Arnold Classic, your all-time best. I know that's debatable, but at the time we hadn't seen that. Right. How did you feel when that happened? I mean, like I uh, did on a video I just sent you, I truly didn't know anything. I wasn't a historian of the sport. I hadn't seen too many ma uh, magazines or anything like that. So I was just so green, I had no idea. I had no idea what it was uh, or what it meant to win the Honor Classic because I wasn't a historian at the time. Um, and I just barely knew anything about dieting and all that, it just, things came together, but I can't take the responsibility because I truly didn't know nothing about it at all. Yeah. Even that whole year, 90, uh, 93 to four shows I did, which it was four. Yeah, it was four. <laughs> You're right, I got it wrong. <laughs> that was all good. Correct me. I just didn't know anything. Um, you know, I'm dyslexic. And I don't have the ability to be a rocket scientist or you know a doctor. So I just kind of took what I had and ran with it. And you were a big part of that. And I've said this so many times. I looked up to you because you kind of looked like me uh, and everything. I literally, you know, videotape. I'll go to one of his shows, which was uh, Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah. Went to that show, and then I came back home. My, my buddies would videotape me doing the exact same uh, posing routine, uh, trying to you know just emulate him. And also you just taught everybody, we always talk about this, you taught everybody the business side of, of bodybuilding. Uh, so I thank you for that. And our rivalry is, it's like historic, right? You always have like a great person, but there's always another great person on the other side and you end up going head to head. Unlike Dexter, there was no rivalry for him. No, <laughs> just kidding. He, he was ahead of his class, Dexter, man. Yeah, because he's he, a few years younger than us. So yeah, that, that yeah. played to his, his uh, his favor, but we had such a deep lineup with yourself and Chris and with, with Vince Taylor, with Kevin Lavroni. Um, Nasser, all somebody. Nasser, there were some great rivalries. Yeah. And you, again, you gave birth to Ronnie Coleman. That's a story for another day, but you went through some trial and tribulations and we've had our ups and downs, our brotherly fights and our competitive uh, Nature, fights. Yeah. And, and we trained together. People are, yeah. aren't aware that we actually and hit travel. Apart. And, and we train. actually traveled together globally. We travel. tried to set up the same flight, be there at the same time and all that. And that's what's so different now, you know, I wanted to win and I wanted to just destroy my, my opponent. I wanted to embarrass them and own them. Um, but we rooted for each other. We still had camaraderie. You know, if it wasn't a show, we'd hang out and go to shows and everything like that, which is so different now. You would think the internet would bring everybody closer, right. but it truly hasn't. Yeah, it's a different time that we're living in, but the times that you came up, Flex, you were changing the game. I mean, people 
well, as a friend, we were rooting for you. Of course, mm -hmm. as a competitor, we wanted to destroy you, like you said. And that created some rivalries across the board. Yeah. I was a little more vocal, but and I knew what buttons to push because I knew your vulnerabilities. Yeah. And you exposed yourself to me. And I, yeah. I took advantage of a lot of that. And I was one of the guys you wanted to destroy. <laughs> but as you, were, as you continually did your thing and won those four Arnold Classic championships in the throes of competition, um, you weren't really paying attention to what you were actually achieving at the time. No, I, I didn't know. Um, you know, I, I didn't know how big that that world was because I was just so incubated from Fresno. You know, hardly ever seen a magazine or anything like that. It's just by chance. You know, I, I was training. I was doing martial arts at the same time, so I would do my uh, training, and then I'd go over and do my my fighting and everything. And you know, I think the first time Winston Roberts. That was the first time I ever lost, uh, went to, out of the United States. He invited me over to Canada. Canada, and that was my first guest appearance. And I'm like, wow, you can make money at this. So, you know, I've always said, and I got beat up so many times, but, you know, this was based on money because I was poor. I've been homeless and all this stuff. So I'm like, I can make money at this? Are you kidding? So I just threw all, everything into that hat and tried to make it happen. Well, I think the alternative was supposed to be martial arts. Yeah, yeah. But and you chose bodybuilding. Thank yeah, God. Yeah, no, yeah. But there was no avenue to make money back then in martial arts. Right. Uh, there was no mixed martial arts, you know, was no movies or anything. So for us, you know, true martial art uh, guys, we, we thought it was embarrassing. We'd get a role in a movie and a star would throw an overhead haymaker and knock us out. You know, it was so disrespectful. So actually it was Ty McGuire who uh, was a big part of my martial arts world and also my mentor. He's like, I'm like, which one do I do? You know, he goes, you, you're good at both. I'm like, yeah, but which, which one do I do? He goes, you do the one that picked you. And I was like, which one's picked you? And he goes, bodybuilding has. I'm like, really, how could you say that? But he was right. Well, a lot of people talk about genetics and shape and structure, and it almost takes away the hard work mm -hmm. and the sweat equity that you have to put in. You, on all appearances, didn't look like you were all in love with your work. You didn't look like this was a passion. I remember you said when you're done bodybuilding, yeah. you're never going to the gym again. Yeah, I was gonna be a fat bastard. And that actually came true. Um, I was so overweight that I had to hold my breath to reach over and, and tie my shoes and everything. Which but, is what uh, I do these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. But um, no, I mean, you know, body, uh, martial arts have always been my first love. Uh, and I even thought I was gonna be able to go back and fight. Uh, actually, they had set up a fight with me and Bob Sapp. Bob didn't know yet, but I was training for it. And then I realized, um, I went to the doctor for one of my checkups. He's like, you can't do it. I'm like, why? Because if anybody hits you or kicks you in your kidney, yeah. it's gonna kill you. So, um, yeah, but anyway, you know. Well, that's the segue into it because the kidney became literally the end of your career. Yeah. This was something you were unaware of. And yeah. when it finally got a prognosis on it, um, it seemed to just, take you out of yeah. your game because every year after competing you were in the hospital yeah. for dehydration and having to get the IVs yeah. and ultimately it, it sapped you of your career. Talk on that. Yeah, um, you know, I, I didn't understand and uh, you know, I have um, FSGS, focal glomerulosclerosis and at that time uh, there was other, only one other popular person who had that uh, and he was a basketball player. I won't say uh, his name or anything Alonzo like Morning. Yeah, Go ahead. definitely. Alonzo Morning. <laughs> <clears throat> so, I still look like a, like a demigod. So it's like when they told me like, you know, you have SGS, it's the most uh, aggressive and deadliest kidney disease known to mind and there's no cure that you will pass away from this. So I was like, how, how is that true? Because if you look in the mirror, I look like I'm unbreakable, but uh, they was right. And it, I couldn't understand it. So I came back in 1999 after being diagnosed with that. I came back and competed at the Olympia and everything in 2002, won the Honor Classic. and. I can't remember what place I got. Yeah, you won the Arnold Classic in yeah, 2000. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but then it starts getting worse. It started like being really hard to get in shape. You know, what I had to do to dry myself had to be more and more aggressive. And, you know, I think even when I competed naturally uh, in 2003, Three. Yeah. yeah, when I competed naturally, you know, I ended up in the hospital that night again. And I really didn't understand. And the doctor's like, you can't ever do this anymore. I'm like, why? And he goes, the food that you eat, you know, the, how much water you drink, you know, potassium is all dangerous. It can kill you. Um, so, you know, I just didn't understand. I didn't take anything to get ready for that show, no diuretics or anything. So that really sealed the deal for me. Um, and I just knew then, and probably the best thing that happened is I was now in a fight of my life. 
I was literally in the again, hospital. Again, by yeah. the way. Yeah, again. Again, you had several fights for your life. Yeah, so I think that really helped me to walk away from bodybuilding uh, because I had to deal with these problems health-wise. So well, let's back up. 94, you were almost dead. You had crashed your car on the freeway. <laughs> you were in the hospital, a broken neck. Joe Weider takes your contract away, which means you have no means of income. You can't guest pose. You cannot compete. Um, and you got to claw your way back. And one year later, you were getting second place in the 95 Arnold Classic to Mike Francois. And again, because I, I wasn't aware of the the volume and you know what I was doing, it was it seemed always easy for us. Like this is what people do. Uh, only after each situation, I would understand how difficult it was. But even though I really considered myself a weak person with no strength at all, um, I, I always fought. I always said, no matter what, I'm not going to lose because of lack of fighting. So my, my brain just works differently. Uh, most people who don't believe in themselves won't try hard. I well, still I gave that, it everything I, I had. I think that's why it brings us to why Arnold chose you as the Lifetime uh, Achievement Award recipient some 20 years in retirement. I believe the last time we saw you on stage was 03. You made an right. attempt in 04. Yeah. And then you made another attempt in 2017 yeah. for the classic physique. Yeah. And a lot of people against the better judgment were saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But at that time you had already had the kidney transplant yeah. and you didn't have to train it such an extreme. What right. was that experience like for you there? It was beautiful. Um, honestly, it was probably the most purest and, and enjoyable times of uh, doing prep and going back into a show. Um, I didn't have to eat 8,000 calories a day. I didn't have to eat, you know, 12 ounces of filet mignon and all that stuff. So I was literally eating three times a day and the condition was, was coming out just like, wow. So a lot of people thought, how could you do that? How could you be so stupid? But because I was taking care of myself, it actually dropped my kidney number and actually my kidney was doing better than it had before based on just eating garbage and not being active, so. It seemed like for you, at least from the cheap seats, that it was more of a, a personal challenge rather than training to actually win, which is what you've done your whole life. Did you think you had a shot at winning that title? No, no, I, I, I never believed in myself. And I know you know this already. I, I never believed in myself. I was more or less a, a uh, not a pessimistic, but a realist. I was aware that it could happen and I was aware that it may not happen. So I just always looked at things, well, let me just try everything I have, but I don't think it's gonna happen. You know, I just have a weird look, uh, uh, way of looking at things. Well, Flex, you've staved off death numerous times, but in the process, you gave birth to five kids. Mm -hmm. Your grandfather to how many? Oh my gosh, I can't even count. I think my great grandfather now too. Great grandfather. So I have, uh, let's see, two, Five, five grandkids. Five grandkids. And two great grandkids. Yeah. And you will be 58 years old this August. God and this man. March 4th in Columbus, Ohio, Arnold Schwarzenegger is going to induct you into his Lifetime Achievement Award. And we've seen people come before that. Last year we saw Ronnie, Ronnie Coleman. Yeah. Uh, we've seen Triple H, Lee yeah. Haney, Jack LaLanne, Sly Stallone, some very impressive resumes uh, of recognizing their body of work. And your body of work fits right in there. So when they told you this was going to happen, I mean, how did it move you? So they didn't tell me I was in England and uh, at the Honor Classic there. And they told me to stay in my seat there that, you know, I was getting ready to go to the bathroom. I was like, no, stay in your seat. So then I played that video. I had no idea. I, you know me, I'm, I'm a huge crybaby. I, you know, where, yeah, <laughs> I wear my emotions on my sleeve, good and bad. And, um, you know, I, I just didn't, I didn't feel like I, I, I deserved that. You know, I didn't feel that I deserved that type of accolade. But did Even, you hear the intro I just yeah. gave you? You not only deserve it, it's actually long overdue. Because again, all the other recipients of this award, Flex, have never had to go through life-changing battles. They were all very successful. Yeah. Sly Stallone is one of the greatest box office yeah. personalities Gosh. there are. I mean, Triple H is a wrestling icon. Yeah. They didn't fight death and come back and be victorious. You won four Arnold Classics. And here you are now, totally transformed. It's not even about titles anymore, yeah. but you're just as prominent in the industry. Yeah. Training people, endorsing products, still traveling the world, still doing the business of bodybuilding, which is why I believe Arnold chose you for this because who else embodies this type of recognition than yourself? And when it sunk in, how did it feel? It still hasn't, you know, as I, as I said to you and as I said in a, a post, you know, whenever I even think about that, I get emotional. And I'm like, you know, how am I gonna be able to carry myself there? I don't, I don't even think I'm gonna be able to talk. I, I keep thinking of all these great speeches of, to be able to thank everybody like you, like Chris Kamora, you know, uh, Arnold Swerk and just everybody, and especially Jim Larmer. And every time I get to that point, I just lose it. So, you know, I, I, I've 
been through so many metamorphoses on the truth is I don't really care about you know any accolades from bodybuilding and what I mean by that is you know bodybuilding is what I've done it's not who I am right and you know there's so many horrible people out there you know look at Epstein so it's sad that the public looks at you if you look good or you have a great physique or you know you're rich or super smart you're viewed as a good person if you don't look good and you live on welfare and you you know you don't have any money you're looked at as a bad person so I want my legacy to, to truly be about just I just cared about people you know I'm stupid enough to believe that we can change the world if we all unite and uh, that's what I'm about you know I don't want to I don't I don't want when I pass away my my history of uh, what I've done uh, I want it to be the history of what I'm doing now well it looks like you're getting your flowers above ground which is what we could all hope for um, everyone knows who you are and what you've contributed in bodybuilding but what's more important right now is what you're doing today and you are in the gym more now than you were when you were actually bodybuilding, sharing the love and teaching the next generation not only how to get in shape, but also how to compete, compose themselves and, and be professional. How is that side of business for you? It's, my, it's just my way of giving back. You know, um, I always use a saying from Sir Isaac Newton, you know, it's by seeing, seeing farther than others it's because, because I stood on his shoulders of giants. So it's just my way of getting back. I didn't get here, I climbed on your back. I climbed on everybody's back and only then because I was on, uh, on the backs of so many great men and women, I was able to do what I can do, but it's just purely giving back. Uh, I just want to give back and give people the opportunity that we had, because uh, it's slipping away. Um, we were both weeder athletes, because of weeder we traveled the world, but now people, you know, it's just different, you know, with the internet, it's such a double-edged sword, and it doesn't feel like it's brought everybody together. It's actually, I think, uh, put a distance between us. So being able to do that, I just love it. You know, I love it. I try to, you know, be responsible about when I train people. And most of the people, unfortunately now, uh, their first question is, what drugs am I gonna do? And my response to them is, I can't help you. You know, you're a drug addict, you're not an athlete, if that's your first thought. Um, but still, I just wanna be pure. And, you know, not to preach or anything like that, but I truly feel that's what I was put here for. All the bad things that's happened, you know, being raped, being beaten, homeless, losing my leg, uh, kidney transplant. I, I, I couldn't relate to those people if I hadn't gone through those times. You know, one of the oldest sayings uh, in the neighborhood, you know, the hood is, you don't know what the F I'm going through. So I can almost sit in every, actually, uh, you know, put all the different hats on. That I've been a millionaire, I've lost uh, millions, I've filed bankruptcy, I've had so many surgeries, I have a deadly kidney disease, I, I'm, I'm, you know, an amputee now. Um, so I have a lot of hats that I can reach down and be able to help other people. Well, all of those hats, I think, have brought us to this moment in time. Coming up here in a, a few couple of short weeks in Columbus, Ohio, where Arnold continually recognizes those doing the business of bodybuilding. Unfortunately, Jim Lorimer yeah. has passed on. He's not going to be there to, sh to share this moment with you. But you've been such an icon and such a role model to so many people for Arnold Classic titles. At the time, it was a record. Dexter Jackson eclipsed that with five. But nonetheless, the, the accomplishment, is, it stands on its own merit because Without you, there's no Dexter. You're right. Without you, there's no Ronnie Coleman. Right. And so without the, you, there's no a lot of us. Yeah. Well, there's I mean, no a lot of us. and again, that's the beauty of this sport. It kind of pays its way forward. Without Arnold, there's no none of us, right? So, right. we're gonna look forward to seeing you in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, following me on your Instagram, which is official Flex Wheeler. Yeah. Yeah. On Instagram to learn more about what's happening, and uh, I tip my hat, man, because the, the challenges that you've overcome, the example that you've made as an amputee. The work that you're doing in the gym, teaching these athletes about training and nutrition, uh, that's to be commendable because again, it takes me back to when you said, when I'm done, I'm never going in the gym again. And you, you are deeply rooted in the gym yeah, at the moment. Definitely. But you know, I mean, uh, again, I don't want to preach, uh, but I do, you know, put my faith first. So I'm nothing and I don't really take any credit from anything I've ever done. It's just him. I truly feel that the uh, book is written for us, like with our children, right? And people are like, how, how do you feel that way? So as a father, as a mother, you have these dreams of, you know, you want your son and daughter to be. So you've already wrote their book, mm -hmm. you know, so it's up to them. It's up to us to be disciplined and follow those rules. So I just can't take credit for nothing. You know, I give all praise to my father in heaven. Well, we're going to recognize you March the 4th in Columbus, Ohio, along with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Team Arnold Classic. Uh, Flex, congratulations. Look forward to seeing you receive your flowers in Ohio.
Thank you, brother. All right. Because of you, we pushed the, uh, each other so hard, so hard. And there's fierce fights. You know, there's different fights between friends and then brothers. Brothers can almost kill themselves, but they're still brothers. So I appreciate, you know, all of our battles because I know you said before that because of me, you pushed harder. But because of you, I pushed harder. So I got to give you first credit uh, for the first person I ever looked up to and, you know, taught me how to pose and also the business side of it. So, you know, I give you all credit for that's, that. Thank you. That's the nature of the game. We got into this business to help each other. We'll see you in Columbus, Ohio for Digital Muscle Flex Wheeler. I'm Sean Ray.